Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to episode 25 of my Logic Pro 10 video tutorial series. In this episode, I'm going to give you a basic introduction to automation. Automation essentially allows you to control parameters in your mix across time. It's one of the most common mixing techniques in audio because it allows you to change things like volume and pan on your tracks across your timeline. And it's not just a mix function either. Um, you can use automation to control plug-in parameters, synthesizer parameters, and MIDI parameters as well. So there's a lot of things uh, that you can do with automation that we're not going to cover in this video, but we will cover later. So what I want to say up front is that this is in no way a complete tutorial on automation uh, or even a tutorial on mixing. Uh, the reason why I'm covering automation now is because in the next several videos we're going to start working with MIDI and one of the central uh, functions of MIDI is controller automation or continuous controller automation. So I want everyone to have a basic understanding of automation before we get to that point. So this again is just a very basic introduction to what's called offline automation, meaning that automation uh, is going to be drawn in with our mouse, not with a MIDI controller or with a control surface. So what I've got here is a mix I'm working on, and it's got a lot of tracks in it, like 39 tracks or so. Um, and uh, But in red, on the top, I have uh, all these kind of vocal tracks, these stacked vocal tracks. Um, basically, what you're seeing is the chorus of the song, this whole area right here. And the lead vocal chorus has been doubled in the left and in the right channel. So this is the left, this is the right. Um, and below it, right here, here, and here, these are essentially stacked vocal harmonies. Uh, so let's listen to what this sounds like. All right, so you probably noticed again that the top two um, tracks are the main melody. And again, these are just stacked uh, backing vocals, harmonies uh, that are kind of kicking in from time to time that aren't singing the entire time. Uh, what I want to do here is I want to increase the volume of the lead vocals uh, where they are kind of not really singing by themselves, but where they're more prominent. And I want to decrease the lead vocals where the harmonies are, where the stacked harmonies are. You can see here there's basically five tracks of stacked harmonies. Uh, so again, one of the great things about automation is that it allows us to adjust uh, parameters across time. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to adjust the volume of the mix across time rather than having to create two different tracks for a volume change. So the way you turn on automation is uh, you click on this icon right here, and this will hide or show automation. Uh, another way to do it is you can just hit A on your keyboard and it'll pull up and hide or show automation. One of the things I don't really like about um, hiding or showing automation in Logic 10 is that the track that you have selected when you hide or show automation is automatically enabled for automation. That's this icon right here. Um, I would much prefer that it just stays off until I turn it on, but it is what it is. I don't think you can change it unless there's a preference for it, and I've checked, and I don't see a preference for it. So to enable automation on a track, you just click on these icons right here, and you'll see the, the track uh, changes color and darkens, and you'll see that a line will show up on the track. Um, okay. Uh, one thing that you can see here is that on the backing vocals down here, I already have some automation drawn in. Um, here we have a volume change from negative 6.1 dB to negative uh, 4.3. And then over here, I have a pan change. I'm going from far, far right to a little less far right on the track. So uh, volume is not the only parameter that we can adjust with automation. Uh, we can automate pan, sends, inserts, insert bypasses, plug-in parameters, synthesizer parameters as well. So for this video, we're just going to stick to volume and pan, nothing else. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is right here where the lead vocal is kind of more exposed, we're going to pull up the volume so you can hear it better because I'm having some trouble hearing the lyrics there. And then we're going to pull it down here 
where these five vocals are stacked together. So just one more time, let's, uh, let's, let's just listen to this one more time, just this section, and then we'll uh, automate the volume. So the part where he says, feeling faith lost in, I want to pull that up. And then the word music, where the stacked vocals are, I'm going to pull that down. Or actually, I'm not going to pull it down. I'm just going to leave it where it's at. So let me just zoom in a bit here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that on the track header, volume is chosen as our uh, automation parameter. Now, by default, vo volume will show up as your default uh, uh, automation parameter. So... Um, what you're seeing here on the track, this line, is what's called a breakpoint envelope. And a breakpoint envelope essentially allows you to uh, create a break in the envelope, a uh, break in the line, and increase or decrease values. Here we're going to increase or decrease volume. So all you do is you click on the line to create an automation point. There we go. And I'm going to go over to where the word music starts right here create another one now we can't just create two like this we actually need to create two more inside of those two to create kind of a pivot point for us to pull automation up or pull it down while not affecting everything to the far left or to the far right um, you can also double click on an automation point to delete it so what i'm going to do uh, is instead of just pulling up or down on these two points what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull up or down whoops i'm going to pull up or down right on the line in the middle it'll actually pull both of them up at the same time so i'm going to pull this up to negative 2 db so it's a little bit louder than before right here and then the volume will come back down right there and then we'll do the same thing down here on our second track our second vocal track here create our four points pull straight up and there we go now one of the tricky things about automation is that there's so many places that a point can be vertically that sometimes you'll move the line or a point up or down and it won't quite snap to the correct value that you want it to snap to. Uh, one thing that you can do is you can hold control while you're moving a point or moving the line and it'll kind of lower the resolution of, how, of your movement. And so like when I pull straight up or down, it's directly moving to that position. But what I can do is if I hold control it'll kind of move to like a fine movement. So I can kind of fine tune this and make sure I get right to negative uh, two instead of, you know, 2.1 or 2.2 or something like that. So let's just pull that down, get to negative two. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> and there we go. That's, yeah, there we go. Yeah, automation's a little tricky, um, especially when you're trying to do it with your mouse, so. Okay, so let's take a listen to this. We should hear volume come up and then volume come, volume come back down. Yeah, there we go. So sometimes it's these subtle things, you know, just a subtle bumping up or down of volume that help the mix to really uh, come to life. Now, I, can, I could, if I wanted to, pull this way up, uh, but it's going to be really exaggerated more than we want it to be. Actually, that wasn't half bad. So, uh, another thing you want to make want to make sure is on is over in your track header. There's this uh, another just to the left of the uh, the automation parameter. There's another menu that'll say probably read. Um, when that is on read mode, that basically means that the track is currently reading the automation on the track. Um, you for now you don't want to use touch latch or write. Those are called live automation modes. Those are ones that you draw in in real time. We'll use those in a future video. But so for now, we're just going to use read. The other thing is that if you check your mixer, hit command two. If you check your mixer, the tracks that have read on on them will be in green. And if you want to disable automation in those tracks, you just hover over the left side and turn it off and it'll turn off automation as you can see the automation has kind of been grayed out here in the background and we can turn it back on now the other thing is i don't want to have that that high i don't want it at 0.3 because i'm going to be clipping now so what i'm going to do is just pull this down to uh 0.0, .0. whoops 
Yeah, I'm going to pull it down to 0, 0.0. Well, sure. Negative 0.01. That'll work. There we go. Now, let's say we want to copy this same shape here over to this section right here. Uh, he says, uh, well, let's just listen to it. So basically, we want to pull the automation up for this whole section right here. And when he says losing time, where all the stacked vocal harmonies are, we're going to pull it back down again. We'll keep it where it is. Now, you could just go in and draw this in again, but you can actually copy and paste this shape from here over to here. And the way we do that is with our automation select tool. Uh, the automation select tool is one of the normal uh, edit tools in the arrange window. And all you do is you drag over the automation points here with your uh, uh, automation select tool. You can click and just drag to move things, uh, but you can also just hold option to duplicate the shape. It'll make a duplicate of it. I'll do the same thing down here. And no, you can't, uh, you can't duplicate a shape from one track to another track, unfortunately. Now, the problem here is that the shape isn't far enough over. We need it to move over a bit further because this phrase is a little shorter than this phrase. Now, it's pretty easy. You just click on the background to deselect the automation, and then you just pull the points over. So we're just extending our breakpoint envelope across a greater range. Do that there, and I'll do the same thing right here as well. There's also an automation curve tool, but We'll come back to that later as well. So let's see what this sounds like now. And there we go. We can better hear the vocals here than we can here now. Uh, let's talk about pan now. Um, let's say that I want to pan these vocals right here where the uh, the harmonies are a little wider so we get kind of a more exaggerated stereo spread effect. But during the part where he's kind of singing by himself or more or less by himself, um, we don't want the pan spread to be as drastic. Um, all you have to do is go to the track header here and change volume to, and you go to main and then choose pan. And what you'll see here is there's a whole bunch of other parameters we can choose. Volume pan, solo, mute, send amounts, insert bypasses, and also every single insert that's on your channel strip will show up here as well. So if I want to automate just an element of my compressor here across time, you can. So you can really go crazy with this, uh, but we're not going to do that in this video because we're just kind of sticking to the basics here. Um, so I'm just going to go to main and then pan. And here I'm also going to go main and pan. Now that doesn't um, get rid of the automation that we drew in before. You can actually have multiple automation parameters on one track. You can see very faintly here in the background the yellow line representing volume and this kind of faint, I think it's a green line representing pan. Um, so what you'll notice here, let me just type in some points here. There we go. What you'll notice is that the pan on the left track, the upper track, is far left, and then the uh, pan on the lower track is far right. Now, in case you don't understand um, panning and logic yet, um, panning and logic is a little weird. The 50, negative 50, positive 50 doesn't mean 50%. Actually, um, pan and logic is a MIDI data byte value, which is from 0 to 127. So... In logic, far left is actually negative 64, and then far right is actually, well, it's actually negative, or positive, actually, yeah, yeah, uh, positive 63. So you take positive 63 plus negative 64, you get 127, plus center, which is zero, you get zero to 127, uh, 
total of 128 possible values. So again, I don't want you to think that 50 means 50% to the left or to the right. It actually means far more than that. So what I'm going to do here is where the stacked vocals come in, I'm going to pan him further to the left and further to the right so that we get a more drastic uh, stereo spread effect. So where the word um, music comes in here, I'm going to make it far left. And everything before that will be 50 left. There we go. And I'll do the same thing down here. Far right for the word music. And then 50 right for everything else. And then I'll just uh, create some more points here. Pull this back down to 50. I'm kind of doing this the long way because I didn't make that little plateau like I did before. But it works the same way. And then again, we can use our automation select tool to grab this automation. Hold option to duplicate it pull it over to the new location, do the same thing down here, and then I'm just going to kind of extend it out a little further because this uh, phrase is a little longer than the one was before. And so let's take a moment and just listen to what this sounds like. Let's say that for some reason we want to be able to see both the volume automation and the pan automation on the track simultaneously. Because right now we're seeing pan and we're kind of seeing a dimmed version of volume in the background. Uh, what you can do is you can click on this little arrow here. And what it'll do is it'll create an additional automation lane for us. And, um, you know, this lane can be anything we want it to be. And you can actually, if you hover over the, the lane uh, header over here, you can actually add um, or subtract or take away this lane. So you can actually add another lane to this. So I can have pan volume and a plugin parameter uh, simultaneously showing. So now we can see the volume automation and the uh, pan automation simultaneously. So that's kind of cool. Now, let's say that we want to delete automation on the track. Let's say we want to just completely get rid of the automation uh, on our track. Uh, one, the way you can do it is you click on the track, you go up to Mix up on the top here, and then you go to Delete Automation, and then you say Delete either Visible Automation on Selected Track, that's what's shown in the lane, or you can say Delete All Automation on Selected Track. I'm going to do that one. And it deletes all the automation. You can turn off automation, and then you're back to where you were before. Another thing I'll do um, pretty commonly when a client sends me a mix that they've done or a song they've done, they want me to mix it for them, is I just like to start from scratch sometimes. So what I'll do is I will uh, go up to Mix, Delete Automation, and I'll say Delete All Automation, and it deletes all of the automation in the session. So I can kind of have a blank slate to, uh, to work with. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, like I said at the beginning, this is in no way a complete automation tutorial. We're just working with volume and pan here. Um, in future videos, much later on, we'll talk about live automation using uh, controller assignments, MIDI controllers, and uh, control surfaces to write in automation in real time rather than having to click it in uh, with a mouse. And so for pretty much for everything we've done here, we've just been using the pointer tool and the automate or the uh, 
the um, automation select tool. Uh, one other quick thing that you can do is you can use the pencil tool as well, and you can draw in kind of like freehand automation, although it's not nearly as accurate as uh, just kind of drawing in lines with the uh, the pointer tool. So I usually choose not to use the uh, the pencil tool. So I hope you enjoyed the video, um, and thanks for watching.